Thanks for joining me today. If you've known me for a while, you know that I love fail videos. You'll never see me laughing so hard as when I'm laughing at the misfortune of other people. Uh, but don't get me wrong, I don't want people to get seriously hurt. I'm just, I just really think it's a great quality to have to be able to laugh when things don't go the way that you want them to go. When someone's trying to do something that they think that they can do, that they think they know how to do, and it doesn't go well for them, it's a good quality to have to be able to just laugh it off and, and to move on. Um, that's why I hope that the people in this video I'm about to show you um, can laugh at themselves. Check it out. Some great fails right there. Hopefully you have no idea what it feels like to fail at that kind of level, but uh, keep thinking about that video for just a minute, all right? Um, and I wanna see if I could relate to the, uh, if we can relate to the people in this video on another level. We're in the series called Walk It Out, where we're talking about the question, how does a Christian really live out their faith? So with that fail video in mind, let me ask you, do you feel like you're trying to live the Christian life, but you keep failing. You keep getting tripped up. You keep stumbling. You keep falling down. You keep doing wrong. You keep uh, feeling behind. Maybe, Or maybe you just don't know what to do. See, I think that if anybody is really honest with themselves, they, they have felt that at some point in their life. The sad part is um, when we go through these fails as we relate to our faith, um, it's not funny, right? It's not funny to fail when it comes to our faith um, like it is to fail when it comes to, you know, like we just saw track and field events. Um, the physical pain of falling down will eventually go away, but the guilt and the shame of falling down in our faith can, can haunt us over and over again throughout our lives. So the question is, how do we walk out our faith when we keep failing, when we keep messing up, when we keep uh, feeling like we're a failure? That's where we're headed today, and in the Bible, we get the perfect example of how to answer that question through the teaching of a man named Paul. Paul was one of the biggest uh, leaders in the early Christian church. He went around and started a bunch of churches around the known world at the time, um, and there were no phones and emails, so what he would do is after he'd start those churches, he would write letters to the churches to check in on them and give them instructions. And the book of Romans in the New Testament of the Bible is one of those letters. So this guy named Paul, he's a super Christian. People looked up to him. He was a man that had it all together. He knew what it looked like what it, to, to, to really walk out his faith. But check out what Paul has to say about himself. Here's what he says in the book of Romans chapter seven. He says, I don't really understand myself for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So I am not doing, uh, so I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. Now, wow. All right. So not, not the way you would expect a super Christian would talk about himself, right? And in those verses, he's really just getting started. We're going to read more about what he has to say about all this in a few minutes. Um, but we're going to take a closer look at this, what he's saying. And we're going to see what Paul is giving us, um, how he's giving us insight on how to push through faith failures. One of the first things you can do to push through faith failure is to seek to understand yourself. So Paul said it pretty clearly. He said, I don't understand myself for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Have you been there? That could be a real tough place to be. See, I, I want to be generous, but I don't give to others. I want to share my faith, but I always back down when the opportunity comes up. I want to go on a serve day, but I just keep sleeping in. And then it goes for the sin in our life as well. 
I want to stop cussing, but the words just keep coming out of my mouth. I want to stop looking at porn, but I keep clicking on it. I want to stop lying, but I just can't help myself. An important concept that Paul is getting to here in this passage is that gaining a deeper understanding of yourself can really help you fight against natural tendencies or weaknesses in your life that leads towards faith failure. Um, This works on a couple different levels. First, when you begin to understand weaknesses, you can learn how to strengthen them. We get this when it comes to physical fitness, right? If you're weak in an area, you go work out. You get stronger. You work on that weakness. And whether it's your language or what you watch on TV or what you listen to or whatever weakness you think you have in your life, you can work on getting that stronger in that area um, and resist and and be able to have self-control when you admit it and when you learn more about yourself of what that weakness is. Another thing that happens is when you seek to understand yourself is you can gain insight that you did not previously have before. Basically, if you get other people to help you better understand yourself, you you can begin to see your blind spots, the things that you can't see yourself. If you get asked people who care about you for insight, they can, they can really show you how you might be contributing to your own faith failures. So in sports, like athletics, you get a coach to help you work on your shot or work, you know, work on your game in some way that you can't see yourself. In the business world, companies actually hire outside sources like analysts to come in and help them see where they're weak and where they can improve their business. In school, a tutor can come in and help explain a concept to you that you don't really know all that well. Um, And for us in faith, um, our friends or pastors or people that we know that have a good godly relationship with um, with their Lord and Savior can really help you gain insight into areas where you feel weak. Um, For me, um, one of the ways that that I did this actually through a a resource. Gaining self-understanding for me has really helped me push past faith failure. And there's a personality model uh, called the Enneagram that I went through years ago and I found out that I was an Enneagram 3. And you may know what that is or that might mean nothing to you, but I discovered something about this personality profile that really helped me. See, an Enneagram 3 struggles with being deceitful. All right, so people with this personality trait believe that they are only loved because of what they produce or what they achieve. So the temptation, you know, for me and for kind of anybody who's got this number is to exaggerate, to bend the truth, or possibly even to straight up lie to make themselves look better than they actually are. So I learned this about myself and it really has helped me tremendously. I'd always battled, you know, this, this, this underlying desire to like not present the full truth in certain situations. And I finally understood why. It's because of this weakness in me. I'm constantly trying to, um, you know, make myself look better to other people. Um, But now what I do is I tell myself that God values me for who I am. I catch myself when I feel tempted to make myself look better than than I really am. And, And I commit to being honest no matter how it makes me look. Still struggle at times, but that's really something that's really helped me in my life. So the first thing you can do to help yourself push through faith failure is to seek to understand yourself better. Let's keep reading through Romans and see what else we can learn. Paul goes on to say, and I know I know, know that nothing good lives in me, that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing it. It is sin living in me that does it. I'm going to stop there for a bit. I discovered something this week that I want to share with you. Have you ever heard of the concept called frogging? I I just heard about this. I don't know what it is. But if not, here's what it is. Frogging is when someone secretly lives in another person's home without their knowledge. Creepy. Terrifying, right? Uh, There are stories of people who wonder why food is missing from their fridge or why doors are open that they did not open or why lights are on that they did not turn on, only to discover that there has been somebody hiding in their house for sometimes days, sometimes weeks, sometimes up up, up to a year or more. Um, I bring this up because one of those statements that Paul just said in this passage, he said, if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. Now you might think this is the passage that you've been hoping for. You can tell your parents that um, all the wrong things that you've done that they're blaming you for doing, you're not at fault. The Bible says if I I do what I don't wanna do, I'm not the one really doing the wrong. But that's not what this passage is really saying. Let me reread part of it. It says, if I do what I don't wanna do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. 
Now, this may not sound uh, scary to you, it might not sound as scary to you as frogging, but in reality, it is so much scarier than that. Sin living in you. This is what Paul said. Sin is what separates you from God. Sin is what's, it's what keeps you from living a full and purpose-filled life that God has for you. Sin weighs you down. And the Bible says sin ultimately kills you. And in our day, today life, sin is responsible for our faith failures. So the second tip that Paul has for us on how to push through faith failures is starve your sinful nature. In this passage we read, Paul tells us that sin is alive. He says that sin is living inside of him, and sin lives in us too. Even if we're Christians, sin is still hiding where we least expect it, waiting for us to drop our guard. So let me ask you, if you have a person living in your house, frogging you, all right, um, what is the best way to get rid of him? Call the cops. That, that's, that's actually the best, that's the first tip I want to give you if, if that happens. But um, for our analogy here today, here's what I want to tell you. If you want to get rid of somebody in your house, starve them out, right? Because a person can only live so long without food. They won't last. A person can only go so long after a little time, they're going to get weak. After a little while, they can actually die from lack of food. And the same is true with sin that's living in you. The more you starve sin, the weaker it gets. And eventually that sin that's living in you could end up dying. Let me give you an example. Language, all right? So a lot of us struggle with that. If you're constantly cussing or putting people down or whining or whatever your language issue is, you need to starve what is feeding that sin in your life. And how do you do that? Um, you limit and possibly even remove what feeds that sin. So. For some of us, it might mean cutting out the music and shows that are constantly putting that kind of language, that kind of like downgrading, um, cussing language into our, into our ears and into our brain. Um, for some of us, it might mean unfollowing certain social media accounts that contribute to that. Um, for some of us, it might mean limiting the interaction with certain people in our lives or maybe even cutting some people out altogether. We fail in our faith when we give into our sin and sin is alive and growing in us when we feed it. So don't feed sin, starve it out. Don't let it grow, don't let it live. And uh, the sin, as sin weakens and dies in us, in you, you'll be able to push through faith failure so much better than you've ever had before. All right, let's move on to one last thing that we read from Paul's letter today, and here it is. He says, I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God, the answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ, Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So our faith, our faith failures are caused by something very powerful. Guys and girls, I don't think many people fully understand how powerful sin is. Paul says that sin has made him a slave, a, a slave. And now we know what this word is from our history lessons, right? Um, and it's still active today, but specifically in history lessons, we know that slavery is not a good thing. Slavery is owning a person. A slave has no rights. A slave has no freedom. A slave has no control. A slave is under control of a master. And Paul says there is a power in him Sin makes him a slave. And if Paul, who I already told you about, is, is who God used to write much of the Bible, who started churches, who's one of the most prominent Christians of all time, if Paul says that sin has this power to enslave him, guys and girls, we have no chance, except, except that the same power that Paul sought is the same power available to us as well. So in our last tip from Paul from this passage of how to push through faith failures is call on God's power to fight sin. Sin is strong, but it's no match to how strong God can be in your life. So here's what you do to call on, on, on God's power to fight sin. First, before temptation ever even pops up, read God's word, the Bible. 
The Bible is God's guidance for you. It tells you how to overcome the temptation that you're facing and the sin coming at you. So read God's word to give you God's strength. And next, when temptation comes your way, pray. Ask God for strength, strength to resist the temptation, strength to say no, strength to fight back, and strength to even possibly run away from the sin if you have to. Pray that God will help you through that. Also, turn to godly people in your life to, that, that will pray for you and fight with you because God's people working together can fight back sin more powerful than we can fight on our own. So to recap, seek to understand yourself. All right, where you are weak, where you feel tempted, where you are prone to sin. Starve out your sinful nature. Don't let it live. Don't feed into the sin in your life. And also call on God's power to fight sin that is, li that is living in your life. So that's how you can push through faith failures in your life. And let me end with this. Walking it out in our faith, it's, it doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. We are going to mess up. We are going to fail. We are going to, um, we're going to, we're just going to mess up at times. But I want you to be able to know that God will be with you to help you push through the faith failures in your life. When you fail, when you sin, when you mess up, I want you to know that you don't have to stay down. God is on your side. God can help you get back up again. And God can help you walk it out in your faith. So let me pray for you as we close. God, I, pray, I, I just want to thank you to start off that, um, you are a God that's with us. God, when we stumble and fall, when we make mistakes, when we, um, as we all know, aren't perfect, um, you don't leave us, uh, you don't leave us fallen. You don't leave us stumbling. You don't leave us, uh, uh, you know, just d ditch us and, and move on. God, you help us back up. You help us fight back. You help us overcome temptation. You help us live uh, just a, a better life than we could have ever dreamed of. And so, God, I pray that anybody that's struggling with faith failures, some way or, an, or another that they've fallen, that they've made mistakes and sinned and um, just don't feel like they're on the right track. They feel behind or they feel like they just they can't make it back to the life that you have for them. I pray that you, they can understand um, that they're in good company, that one of the leaders of the Christian faith found, found himself in the same place. But God, that through your power, um, through understanding ourselves, God, through starving our sinful nature, God, we can make it past. We can make it through. We can get back up again, and we can fight back the sin um, that is so powerful, God, but is not as powerful as you are in our lives. Um, so I pray for that strength for everybody listening, and I praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon.